Hey Glam Pam Linwood here and today I'm going to be showing you how to do feed in French braids on this lovely head of mannequin hair here. She just came out of nowhere, right? So let's go ahead and jump on into the things that you're going to need and well some of them you may or may not need. I'm going to be using some pre-stretched braiding hair. I have it in pink so that way you can more easily see and differentiate between this hair and the hair that's on the mannequin's head so that way hopefully it'll be a little bit easier for you to kind of see what's going on. I love using these thread racks like this here and you can see I already have some hair pre-sectioned out on this thread rack. The reason why I like using these is because it makes it where as you're braiding all you have to do is pick up and go because you've already pre-sectioned and organized your hair. So it just makes things a lot easier if you're doing any form of feed-in braiding or really box braids, anything like that. These babies here are wonderful. I'm going to be using, well I used a rat tail comb just to part out the hair but I've already got her pre-parted so you won't really see me use it too much. I did go ahead and brush the hair out just with a classic Denman. You can use any brush you want um, just to kind of make sure that it wasn't super tangly. And I'm going to be using some Shine and Jam for added control. Just so you know, you can do this on uh, both straight and coily hair. But if it's coily hair, I would suggest doing it on at least somewhat pre-stretched hair so that way you're not catching and tangling so much as you go. If you're working on straight hair, you may want to opt for more of a texturizing wax rather than the Shine and Jam just because the Shine and Jam on textured hair adds grip, the Shine and Jam on silky here add slip so don't say I didn't tell you let's go ahead and dive into what we're gonna be doing here okay so we have this hair pre-sectioned off here in half of the head now just so you know if you don't know how to do French braiding this is an overhand type of braiding I do have a tutorial for that which I'll link in the top right corner so if you have not learned how to do that first please watch that video before you watch this one because that is seriously putting the cart before the horse now I'm gonna take some of this pre stretch braiding hair here and we're going to go ahead and section off. And I'm taking pretty good sized sections. Honestly, this is big enough to do a box braid with. Um, and honestly, with a French braid of this size, you really want to pick up larger sections. And honestly, you can get away with doing larger sections when doing feed in French braids when you are uh, doing those. So just so you know. I'm going to section off a few of these and put them on my thread rack over here or braiding rack if that's what you want to call it. And then we'll go ahead and get started. Keep in mind, I already have some on there. Uh, and really, when you're adding in hair, you're going to do it by the feel of it and how thick you want that hair to be. Okay? Let's go ahead and put the rest of this hair off to the side. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move the mannequin on in here. I'm going to take some Shine and Jam. I'm going to take that, place it just right here on the back of my hand. And I'm going to do that pretty liberally, just so that way it's right there where I can easily access it. I'm going to place my comb over here. And I'm gonna go around all around the outside edge. Now this is just gonna help me out with kind of gaining that look of sleekness and control. This is not mandatory. I just feel like it makes your braids look a bit neater. And as you can see, it gives an excellent shine to the hair as well. Uh, hence the name, Shine and Jam. <laughs> all right, so once we've gotten that all outside of the section, I'm just gonna go through here and comb that through this hair some, just so we can get some nice definition as we're picking up hair and kind of pre-parting and all that. So we're just combing it in so it doesn't look glump, clump, clumped, clumped up anywhere. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna begin by taking our three strands. Let me move you in some. So we're gonna begin by taking our three strands. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up. I'm gonna start off pretty small here. Taking one, two, and three, just like so. Can you see that? All three of those strands? There we go. So that's what we're gonna do. From there, I'm going to instantly go in and my first strand is gonna be a little different from the rest of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and start underneath. I'm gonna feed this across my outside two strands, just like this here. Okay, you see that? From there, I'm gonna go ahead and bring my right strand over. It doesn't matter if it's right or left, it's up to you. And then what I'm going to do is you see this uh, outside strand here and my middle strand. That's where I'm going to start adding hair in. So I'm going to add hair to my middle strand and let it fall onto the outside. And then we're going to bring that left strand over. And from there, we're going to pick up a bit of hair, add it to my outside strand, just like so, like we always would and bring it on over the middle. Once we go from there, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up on my left side, picking up a little bit of hair. 
and from there I'm going to like this strand here feels pretty thin so I want to make sure I'm adding hair into that so bring it on over and I'm going to stop we're gonna add into the middle and the right strand again now if you want to add into both sides you can but I feel like it's a little bit more difficult for people to manage so I'm just gonna grip that in my hands like so lift you up just a smidge here So we're lifting that up in our hands. You see all that? I'm gonna just pinch a little closer so I can get a nice tight grip. We're gonna pick up some hair to add to that right side, just to be able to take along with us. And then we're just gonna pass over. Once we've done that, I'm gonna go back to the other side, slide across, add into that outside strand and cross on over again. Now, of course, if I want that pink to show more, so I'm just gonna spin the pink to the outside. But usually when you're doing this, you're gonna typically be doing this with a hair color that's gonna match your client's hair a little bit better. So I'm gonna go in again, picking up hair for that outside strand. We're gonna piece those together like so. And I'm just gonna move this out of the way. I'm going to place on my middle strand and my outside strand again. And now we're just gonna go ahead and bring right on over. Take all that hair, pick up on the other side. Now let's say for instance, you feel like, you know what? I really need to add hair to this side here. What you would do there is just go ahead and add in right here from middle to left as well. Um, but honestly, if you're adding it in on that right side, each time that you pass over and you're adding in, you're gonna equally be adding hair to all the sides. So don't stress yourself out with that part. Picking up hair to add in. I'm gonna pull the rest of this hair down and back so it's not in my way. And then I'm gonna pick up another strand of hair, placing it across the middle strand and the outside strand. So I'm gonna pinch in the middle and bring on over. Just like so. So see how that hair looks loose there? I'm not even worried about that because as I go in to braid the next piece, it's not quite like a cornrow where I have to worry about that loose hair. As I go in to braid the next piece on the other side, it's going to automatically hold that snug and in place. So I'm not gonna stress about that piece looking loose for now because when I come over like this, it's gonna hold that down. And then no one even notices that it looks like that. So again, coming back to the right, picking up that hair, and before I bring that hair over, I'm just gonna go ahead, pick up another strand. I'm gonna add it to my middle piece and bring it onto the outside. So each time that I do this, I'm focusing on that middle piece and the outside on uh, that outer portion here. Now, uh, like I said, if you prefer to do the inside, it's fine, the same technique applies. So gripping that hair, flipping over, I'm going to lean her forward some, and we're going to slide across, adding hair from the scalp into that outside strand. And we're going to bring that across that hair that we just added, just like so, and that is going to hold that in place. Coming back across on this side, so we're going to slide across, pick up that hair. I'm just gonna smooth it out a little bit for a bit more sleekness and control. We're gonna smooth this part down. Now, if you feel like this is in your way, take your comb or clip and just kind of place that down like that. And that way none of that hair is getting in your way. And honestly, you just continue on adding in hair uh, until it gets to the thickness that you want this braid. So if you want the braid to be rather thick and full, uh, you can go ahead and do that. If you're adding in color like I'm doing and you want that color to be very prominent, then you go ahead and add it in until you get to the level of satisfaction that uh, you have or you want with that color. I hope that makes sense. See what I'm saying there? So then from there, I'm going to go ahead. We're going to take that hair, grip it, switch to the other side. You take my comb out. If I want to, I can go ahead and pick up with that same comb. Feed that into the outside. So whatever floats the boat for you there is totally fine keeping that down to the scalp cross over
picking up on this side here. Okay, so this is my outside strand here, and we're going to continue adding right on into that. I'm going to add a little bit bigger of a piece on this one. So we've got it on that middle, see that? Then my outside strand on the right is going to come right on over. And that just helps to lock right on in place. Picking up on the left. Bringing it on over. Going back to the right. Pick up on the right. Turn forward some. Actually, you know what? That looks like a pretty good angle. I'm going to leave it there for you. On the right. I'm going to add in my hair here. Okay. So when I do that, I'm adding to that middle strand and to the outside strand. Take that piece and bring it on over. Back to the left. Pick up, add into the outside on the left, smooth it out, cross it over. And you can just kind of see how this is continuing to go and how we gradually add in the pink so it doesn't look super bulbous up here. It just gradually gets bigger as you go. So hopefully you can see how that volume is there. I like this technique because it's very natural looking, especially if you're using a color that is um, similar to your client's hair. Uh, I will say this is a little tedious, so you definitely want to make sure that you are well practiced on your overhand or your French braiding. Smooth that out. Bring this down. I'm going to add into that outside strand and my middle strand here that's in my hand. My other strand here is just kind of balled up in my fist. So across the middle and the outside. Picking up that hair, adding it on over the middle. And see here, I need some smoothing, so I'm just gonna lightly smooth. Then I grip, add to the left, cross over. Add to the right. Now let's say here I feel like, you know, it's getting a little thick. I don't have to add in every single step. You can skip steps if you want to. And then let's say if you get to where there's more hair of your clients in your hand, then you can add in later. You can do however you like to with that. So this is really at your preference in terms of how big you want that braid. Now I personally like that bold look of the pink, so I'm gonna add in every single step until I get down to the bottom. Adding that in. Okay, let me smooth just a little. There we go. Adding on the left. Bring that on over. Okay, and I feel kind of like I need to stop and brush through some, so I'm just gonna do that. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna help out with smoothing that hair that I'm adding in and ensuring that everything just nicely flows together. So that's why I stopped to do that because it just felt like I was having to smooth my fingers a lot more than I cared to. Now hold on, that last one came loose on me. I think that's honestly perfect for a tutorial. So I'm just gonna feed that back into my bottom strand just like so, nothing major. I'm gonna add from the outside I'm gonna pick up a strand of my artificial hair, my synthetic hair here. I'm gonna add it to my outside strand and to my middle strand. And then we're just gonna go ahead and bring that on over. Only thing we're doing really there is just trading places with those strands. So that piece of hair I just added in is really not secure yet. It's this next strand here that's gonna to help to hold that secure. So don't go letting anything go because you can end up with a mess on your hands. See that? Cross on over, and that's what locks it in place. Let me zoom you out a bit. 
Okay. So we've got that added in. We've already naturally picked up some hair here on the right hand side. I'm gonna add again. Now typically when you get here behind the ear, you always want to have your client lean their head forward. What that does when you tilt the head forward like that is it allows the skin to stretch out in the nape so you're not causing any bumps or over, uh, over tightness of your braided style when your client looks down later. And that's gonna make a massive difference in terms of how that style turns out and how uh, comfortable it is for your client. You definitely don't want any bumps, things like that in the nape of the neck. Adding on the right side. I'm going to go ahead and take a strand, add it to the middle and the outside strand. Just like so. And we just cross over. So honestly, let me, let me see here. If I were to take add from the outside here, cross over, and if I wanted to, I could go ahead and add the strand across here as well. So let me go ahead and try that. So adding from the outside, crossing over, just like so. And you guys can see at this point, I've added in a lot of hair, a whole lot. So if I wanna go ahead and add in here, I can do that too, add in there and then just come on over to the other side. Cross over. See that? Nice and easy. Pick up. Come on across. Just like so. Add in. Come on over to the other side. Pick up. Oh, 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 oh. So I ended up letting go of my strands. I'm gonna bring it back up and place it right where I need it. No worries. Bring that on over. And just for the sake of saying I added in every stitch, I'm gonna go ahead and add in one more, okay? So I'm gonna bring it on across just like so. And we're gonna add across my middle and my outside strand, just like I just said. When I do that, I'm gonna come back over here to the right and cross over. And we're just gonna bring that all the way down. Now here, I feel like I need a little bit more smoothness. If you wanna add in some more of your product, your Shine and Jam or your Texture Wax if you have silkier hair, uh, you can go ahead and do it here to help tuck and blend your hair with the synthetic hair that you've added in. For someone who always asks, uh, yes, you can do this with human hair too, but human hair is so much more expensive. Uh, the shade range is not always as wide and uh, usually if you're buying human hair, you're not gonna be able to get it in as long of lengths either. So those are things to kind of keep in mind. And then from here, we're just gonna flip into a standard overhand braid, just like usual. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that in. I've got a little bit more product on the back of my hand, so I'm just gonna add that onto this hair, the human hair on here. And we're going to continue on down just like so okay and we just cross on over until we get down to the very bottoms now when you get to the bottom you can either secure it with a rubber band, you can uh, roll it on like a rod and dip it in boiling hot water because it's it's synthetic and this hair here is Kanekalon. So Kanekalon usually responds really well to uh, being uh, dipped in hot water or things like that in order to close or seal off your braid. So that's just another tip for you there. If you're using Toyokalon, I don't really recommend it for beginners. It's really slick. Um, and usually you have to use a rubber band or some form of adhesive to seal off Toyokalon. It does not burn or melt at all uh, in terms of like actually holding the braid together. So from here, we're just gonna continue right on down 
towards the ends of the hair, just like so. Don't mind my kneecap in the corner. <laughs> And this right here is what I love about using the pre-stretched hair. As you can see here, this hair is just tapering right on down really nicely. So it just gives a very natural looking fall. So when you combine this with the fact that you did a feed-in method, it looks so impeccably natural uh, to where you're able to nicely blend from one down to the other. So check this out. We go from having the hair up here very gradual addition of the hair. Let me get up close, that way you can kind of see how it looks up close. Very gradual addition. We added in every single step of the way. And despite all that hair we added in, it still tapers down incredibly nicely all the way down to the ends of the hair because this is that pre-stretched hair, so it's gradually tapering down anyway. So, yes. I hope that this tutorial has been incredibly helpful. If so, please do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button, uh, share it with a friend, or subscribe to the channel. Um, and until then, take care and stay glam. You know I love you, boo. <laughs> Bye.